Module 5, Lesson 3, Fraction Area Models, Circles and Bars. So in this lesson, we'll build on what we learned about area models in our previous module when we were multiplying and dividing uh, with, with numbers larger than 1, and we'll uh, extend that understanding to work with numbers smaller than 1, or between 0 and 1. We'll look at the cut and color strategy for connecting denominators and numerators to the drawings we make. We'll draw unit fractions from one half through one eighth. And then we'll look at other numerators. And finally, we'll use our visual models to compare fractions. Okay, so for cutting and coloring, I'm going to start with two basic models my circle and my square. And most of my fractions are going to use a circle or a square. Um, when I'm doing area models, mainly because of the symmetry, right? Um, now you could do a star as a fraction, but we'll look in a second about why circles and squares are superior. Okay, now we mentioned in the previous lesson that our top number is called our numerator, and our bottom number is our denominator. Now the thing that can be a little tricky when you first start out is that if you're drawing an area model of a fraction, you're going to start with the denominator, then do the numerator. So for example, if I wanted to show one half with this circle, I'm going to cut it into two pieces. Same thing with this square. I'm going to cut it into two pieces. One of the things that often confuses kids with fractions is the numerator being on the top, the denominator being on the bottom, we tend to think top, bottom. And if you think three and then five, I think in some ways it's the reverse of what we would think about if we were looking at it, okay? So that's one of the reasons why visual models can be helpful for our fractions because we're, we're getting that out. We're actually looking at what does it look like to split something into halves and then to color in one half. Now with one half, I wouldn't say that any, either of these is any better than the other. Uh, as we go on, and first we'll go up by twos because that's going to be the easiest way to build on it. So from one half, I cut again and I get one fourth. Now I can cut these again, and now I have one eighth. So I would say at this point, I like my, my rectangular model a little bit better than my circular model. Um, it's pretty close still here. Um, but what I was trying to demonstrate here is that when I go up by my even numbers, I can just keep cutting them in half. So from one half to one fourth to one eighth, um, I also took care to make sure I was splitting everything down the middle. It is important that when you draw your fractions that you're demonstrating equal size pieces. Now, it's never going to be perfect, but as close as possible to even is really important. Uh, let's look at some examples where the cutting is not even. So these are some common examples I encounter when we first introduce the idea of, of one third. And students are used to one half, so they start by drawing one half, and then they break one of them in half. And this is a great indicator that, that we haven't fully internalized the concept of equal size pieces. So it might be worth reviewing division. Um, to think about the idea that when we divide, if you divide six, we're not going to split that into a group of three, a group of two, and a group of one. Six divided by three means we equally divide into two. The same thing when we're doing a fraction. We divide one whole into three equal size pieces. And here's an example of one-sixth, uh, an attempt at one-sixth, where um, what the student probably did was divided in half and then cut it again this way to show fourths. And then in order to do sixths, they, they went across and cut 
one of their halves in half, but now we're left with something uneven. Um, now, the thing that these two have in common is that the denominator is a multiple of three. So when we have one half, one fourth, one eighth, we can just keep cutting those in half to get equal sized pieces, but when you encounter thirds, fifths, sevenths, ninths, it requires a slightly different strategy. So that's why I started with um, the, the powers of two, two, four, and eight, and then now we'll look at um, doing the, the less common denominators. So here we have two examples of one third, one with a circle, one with a rectangle, and as you can see, we've, we've broken them evenly. I can just do strips across. Um, with, with the circle, I use my Mercedes slash piece symbol. Now, to show one sixth, it's pretty simple on my rectangle. I just do one cut down the middle. My circle is a little bit more complicated, so I have to cut each of my three pieces equally in the circle, um, but I still have a pretty good way to get equal size pieces for one sixth. Okay, so now that covers one half, one fourth, one eighth, which are what I think are the most straightforward because I can cut, keep cutting by twos to get these. Then I start with one third with three pieces, and then I can cut that in half to get one sixth. The next most common would be to cut into thirds and cut each of those into thirds, which will give us ninths. So let's take a look at that. So the same way I did my thirds and sixths, I'm gonna start by cutting into three equal pieces. Then instead of cutting in half as if I'm making sixths, I'll cut these each into three equal pieces. Now at this point, I would say the rectangular model is clearly becoming a lot simpler and a lot clearer in terms of representing a fraction like one ninth. Uh, the circle is still possible, but we're fast approaching the point where cutting a circle into more than nine equal pieces becomes really challenging. So our circle is really great for starting us off, and we'll usually see the circle for one half, one third, one fourth, possibly one sixth. Um, as we get to less common or more complicated denominators, then the rectangle becomes better. So we've covered every unit fraction, and by unit fraction we mean a fraction with one in the numerator, except for one fifth and one seventh in terms of the, the single digit denominators. So let's take a look at the two oddballs. So the trick that I've found to do one-fifth in a circle is I actually draw a tiny star in the middle because there are five points that are equally separated, and then I draw out from the points of the star. To do one-fifth in my rectangle, I'm going to consider the fact that cutting into five pieces, I'm actually only making four cuts, right? Because I start with one. Every time I cut, I'm adding one piece. So in order to make five cuts, five pieces, it's an odd number, and it's hard, I think, to cut into equal odd pieces. But four is even, so I'm going to put a little reference dot in the middle, and I know I have to make four cuts. So if this is in the middle, I'm gonna do two cuts on the top and two cuts on the bottom. Now, one seventh is where we, it gets really challenging with the circular model. Um, we can't just use our three cuts and three cuts like we can on the rectangle because we're not cutting all the way through, right? So one cut doesn't give me two pieces because I'm just going from the edge to the middle. So I actually have to do three cuts and four cuts, right? 
and that's the best technique I've come up with for cutting a circle into seven equal pieces. Again, it's not great, um, but our rectangle is a bit easier. Again, I put my reference dot in the middle, three cuts on the top, three cuts on the bottom. 